Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. This is how to give your students coding experience with Maple. Uh, this is going to be a slightly different webinar. I'm going to be walking you through a number of slides. Uh, of course, this will actually be in Maple. I won't leave Maple. I'm just going to be using Maple's slideshow mode uh, throughout this presentation. So I'll start with just kind of talking a little bit about the general purpose of, of using Maple as a coding environment. And a lot of this is going to be a little bit more philosophical in nature. We're going to talk a little bit more about kind of just how Maple can be uh, complementary to the courses that you'd use Maple in for teaching math and so on. Uh, so to start, let's talk about students. And uh, I think we can see more and more that students are looking for coding experience even when they're not studying computer science. What we're seeing is that in, uh, in post-secondary institutions, the question is how do we give students opportunities they need when they aren't taking programming courses? And how do we support it in such a way that uh, it's also nurturing their overall learning and not detracting from it? So an experience, example here might be that if you're using Maple in a math course, you don't want to be teaching the mathematics alongside of teaching programming. So I think what we talk about a lot today is kind of just ways that we can use Maple uh, in order to, suppress, to make their overall learning experience that much better. So again, the question is, how can we use uh, what can we do in order to support their overall learning and not detract from it? And of course, one, the answer we're going to be talking about today is Maple. So for those of you who haven't seen it before, Maple is math software. It combines the world's most powerful math engine with an interface that makes it easy to analyze, to explore, to visualize, to solve mathematical problems. In the center of the screen here, we've got some screen grabs of some sample Maple examples, as well as some applications that we've generated. Here we have some 3D plots, some 2D plots, and so on. So these are all things that we do typically inside of Maple. So you might be surprised if we start talking about Maple coming up in the context of coding. And this is after all because we've, for a long time, really tried to cement the fact that Maple is known for this clickable math approach, where students and teachers can solve problems and explore concepts without needing to learn any syntax or commands. So examples here are, here is natural input inside of Maple. We can do d over dx of x to the power of x and get the results returned in line. We can also do an integral here, get the results back. If we wanted to in the Maple interface, we can also right click on this and then perform some type of clickable math operation. That's, again, that's kind of where we've seen Maple in a lot of contexts, but what we're talking about today is coding. So Maple also has this sophisticated programming language. That's where Maple started if you go back 30 or almost 40 years now. So the sophisticated programming language is, in fact, the language of the majority of its math engine. Uh, I've got a very quick example here. This is done in the Maple Code Edit region. This is a sample of some Maple code. In this example here, we are doing the first prime after a given integer here. So what we have here, this is a Maple procedure, n procedure. We have some local variables. Inside of this, we have a do until loop. We have a print statement here to print something out. And when you run this, first prime after 37, we get back some results. So, so the code here, it's, it's pretty clean. It's, it's a standardized programming language. I'll talk a little bit more in a second about kind of the comparisons with other languages. But it, it's, it's meant to be a pretty straightforward and easy to learn language as you go. And, and I think the most important part too is, is that having a clickable math interface like I showed you on the previous slide as well as this language. So if I just jump back one here. It, it gives you you know, having both of these styles of interaction, um, it, it just gives you everything you need under in one product, right? So you do have point and click problem solving when you want it, as well as being able to jump over to a programming language. All right, so let's talk about some of the benefits of the Maple language. And I think the first one, probably the most important one, is it's designed for mathematics. Right, I think that's been one of the main strengths of Maple for the longest time. It's always, you know, even if you go back to the starts of Maple, it was designed as a language for computer algebra. It was designed as this language for mathematics. So with that comes mathematical objects like matrices and polynomials. They're fundamental data types in this language. What this means is that students can think mathematically while they're coding instead of having to operate at a much lower, more complicated level. So here we have an example. I've got a uh, just a matrix declared here as A, so A and this colon equals is assignment inside of Maple. So there are some things we have to learn about working inside of Maple, but this is a pretty straightforward one. So A colon equals a matrix. And with the Maple language, if we do A dot with A to the power of minus one, this obviously gives us back the identity matrix. 
So the the code here is not too complex. We're using a dotted with a inverse, basically. Right. So what this is essentially doing is we're kind of trying to reinforce core concepts at the same time as developing some coding skills, right? Because there's almost a one-to-one -one correspondence here between uh, the, the what you'd write on a textbook and what you'd see in the way of code. So what we're trying to do is, is you might not need to necessarily choose between teaching a course and providing programming experience. You're kind of doing something that uh, you can have both and the one reinforces the other. So here's some more examples, and this is kind of just getting into a little bit more of the Maple language, and this is typical commands you'd see in one of those first-year courses. Uh, we've got a lot of commands that are kind of natural language. So solve, here we have solve of 5x minus 7 equals 3x plus 2. You type that in, you get a return, return result back for x. Right, so we are solving a system of equations. Here we have limit, sine of x over x, as x approaches 0. We get a result back. So not all makeable commands are this are this straightforward and readable, but certainly we try to do our best to make sure that the commands themselves kind of map into the textbook as easily as possible. So another benefit, uh, widely used programming style. So what we mean here is that Maple has a procedural programming language. I showed you an example just a second ago of a Maple procedure. And this is similar to a lot of different languages. So you might pick out things like Python or C or C++ or Java. As those are languages that share some similarities with Maple. They're not the same language by any means, but there are things that we can learn as we're learning Maple about fundamental programming in other languages. So I guess this kind of goes back to this point. So if your students already have experience with procedural languages, uh, they, will, they will find learning Maple's language pretty straightforward. Myself, I moved from different languages into Maple, and I, that was my exact experience, that learning another procedural language and moving into Maple it, you kind of have some of those building blocks already. And if they're completely new to programming, um, the, our hope is that they're going to find Maple's logical structure uh, much easier to learn than other types, such as the functional language. And experience with procedural programming, such as Maple's, can easily be transferred to many other procedural languages, as I've mentioned previously, so Python, C++, Java, uh, you, you name it. All right, more benefits. Easy access. So it's it's easy to start writing a code in Maple. Um, it's an interpreted language. Uh, students can run the code directly inside of Maple itself. So here we have an example of for i from 1 to 10 do. We print the value of i and do. Now, it's a simple example. This is just a simple for loop. But what this means for a student as Maple is an interpreted language, it means that the students don't have to worry about setting up compilers or any complex program environments before they begin. They can literally just run the code inside of Maple and get results back. Right? So there's, there's not a lot of overhead here. You literally just open up Maple and you can be programming and getting results back right away. So and as I said before, you can of course mix and match their styles. Right? So you can work like this and you can still go back and forth between clickable approaches, coding approaches, and it's it's really kind of an easy environment to get started with. Um, we can experiment with code. It's a great place to experiment with code. You can translate Maple to other languages. And I'll just kind of quickly jump out of my PowerPoint now, and I'll just show you one of the tools we have that allow you to uh, translate code to other languages. Here I'll go to Tools, Assistance, Code Generation. This is an assistant that we worked on and we're continuing to work on. Here you can take a Maple procedure and we can just click the button over here and we can translate our Maple code to various other languages. So this is again, like we can kind of learn Maple, we can learn what a procedure looks like, and then we can translate that over to another language. right? So we're able to use some of the built-in tools inside of Maple to not only maybe prototype some code in Maple, maybe you get something that you're, some, uh, some example that you can only do in Maple because of our math routines, and then you want to move that over to a lower level language like C, you can do so using some of our code translation or code generation facilities. So there's a lot built in that really kind of makes it a great place for learning, for experimenting with code. So again, if you're curious about this one, this is under Tools, Assistance, Code Generation. You can experiment there. You can put in your own code snippets and try out different things. Um, something else I'll mention. Uh, this is kind of more of a core philosophy for Maple since day one. About 95% of Maple's functionality is written in the Maple programming language. So this means that every Maple user can freely inspect source code for many of these predefined Maple library routines. This, so this is really useful if you're 
looking to have, kind of just get a better glimpse of what is happening under the hood in Maple, which algorithms are being used. And in fact, if you're getting into more complex pro programming for profiling pro purposes. So here's an example. I've got an example here of a procedure. So f is a procedure of x. Here's our if statement. We're doing some printing of x squared and if print minus x, x cubed, and procedure. So the command I'm going to use is show stat. And if you do show stat on a Maple procedure, provided it's not a built-in, um, then you'll get Maple echoing back the procedure as well as line numbers for what's contained within the procedure. So you can use this, as I said, with anything that is not a built-in kernel function. So as I said, like that's roughly 95% of the, lang the language. So if you go into a Maple package, you can just do show stat of a Maple command, and you'll see all the source code. And you can have a look at it and make sure that uh, you're do it's doing what you expect it to be doing. So Maple is also great because it grows with your students. So mathematically, Maple has uh, what your students need to support them in their future STEM education, no matter how far they go. You know, we see Maple being used all the way down to even grade six in some countries, uh, all the way up to uh, research work. Uh, programmatically, Maple can take them from learning how to string together commands to writing simple functions and procedures, all the way to large-scale advanced algorithm and application development. And while your students do not need to know about or use advanced features, if they want them, Maple provides an environment in which they can learn about objects, operator overloading, exception handling, parallel programming, and other advanced programming concepts. So this is all built in. We've got tutorials. There's a lot of good content uh, that you can see and work with inside of Maple. All right, so that's kind of leading me in. This was a kind of quick webinar, but we're getting into our conclusions now. Um, I, I'd say that with Maple and the coding environment you see inside of Maple, uh, to prepare students for future careers, we, we hear more and more that students want coding experience. And we see kind of even part of the public consciousness now is the concept that just kids should be coding. And uh, the challenge we have as educators is, especially at the post-secondary level, is to find a way to provide experience within the context of a non-programming course in a way that just makes sense and adds value to the course itself. So we don't want to be tripping over ourselves and learning a new language. We don't want students to you know, need to kind of go above and beyond. We want to make sure it's complementary whatever they're doing inside of the environment. So for any math course or courses that involve mathematics, such as science, engineering, finance, take your pick, Maple provides an effective solution to this problem. And I'd say that by adopting Maple, you can provide students with the opportunity to learn a valuable skill that will help prepare them for the future. So I guess in other words, I guess what we're saying here is that Maple really lets you give your students coding experience without really truly turning your world upside down. All right, now this, this whole webinar today, this was kind of light on, on our actual work inside of Maple. We're showing you a lot of examples. But we do have many more videos if you are interested in learning more about coding inside of Maple. So primarily, I would go to our YouTube channel, which is MapleSoft Video. You'll find lots of videos there that will get you kind of much closer into the actual language itself. So if you're looking for examples of using Maple to code, you're going to see lots of examples inside of YouTube. You've also got other places you can connect with MapleSoft. You've got our social channel, such as Maple Primes here. This is our user forum. You can talk to us and you can ask us a lot of questions. We've also got other social channels. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and so on. Uh, if you want to request an evaluation, get more information, you can always email us at info at maplesoft.com. And at this point, I think I'll kind of conclude by just mentioning very quickly again that I've been inside of Maple this entire time. This nice looking slideshow I've been working you through has been Maple's slideshow mode. If you're looking to use Maple as a slideshow, here's another tip. We can just use the F11 hotkey or escape. This will jump us in and out of a slideshow. So if you're looking to kind of dress up some of your Maple demonstrations, this is one way to do it.